So last week we talked about new hires and in the process for new hires, at least where I'm at now and how I how I hire new guys. So this week I want to talk about training new hires. So one of the positions, or actually two of the positions that I have looked to to fulfill within the last several months has been a leadership position and then factory hires. So what I do with these leadership position and factory hires is number one, you have partnered with God. So we as kingdom entrepreneurs, we have to remember that we have partnered with God and God is the owner, the CEO. We are simply the steward of the vision that God has given us. So when we move into that, we start to flow in the spirit, then we start to hear from the Lord on what to do and what not to do. So I started to pay attention to the KPI at the beginning of the year. I started to track all of my data. So, and now don't get me wrong, there's some data that I'm still lacking that I still need to track as I am learning and getting better. But I started to track all the data that I was aware of. And, uh, and through that, I started to see an uptick in some things and God started to share some things with me about the future of, of his business. And so when I, when I started to understand these things and see the data, uh, as an example, I've sold more jobs this year and built more jobs this year than all of last year. And so that's just a blessing in and of itself. So when you're, when you're collecting your data, when you have your vision and, and all of your uh, goals detailed out for one, three, five, and seven years, you break that up into monthly goals that then's broken down into weekly goals and daily goals, then you start to see that, okay, I need to bring on somebody that can handle whatever it is that needs to be handed. So this year, start, uh, started a sales team, and I have two people on that sales team and, uh, and then have one person, which is my wife, that is managing that sales team. And so we are, what we're doing now is really focusing on making sure that when we are meeting with the sales team that we are adding value. And so there's been a number of things that we have incorporated to that, that if I go back to the very beginning and probably the first month or more of that, it's like I, I have changed so many things and will be implementing so many things in the weeks com coming soon that is going to make sure we're offering value and uh and that we're very concise with our time but we're training our salespeople how to overcome objections and how not to be a salesperson so so much uh, but to be relationship oriented and value oriented and uh, and then out of that the sales will come because god will bring those sales in so another position that was filled is, is a leadership position so myself as being kind of that visionary ceo position owner of the business, I need to have somebody that is an implementer within the business. So when you look at my org chart, I have myself that sits right here and I am right under God. And then you have uh, an implementer role that needed to be filled. And so I have implementers for the sales team. I have implementers for uh, different portions of my business, but I needed one that I could recreate myself in my shop that could manage the day-to-day -day operations. So I started to pray about it and God provided somebody through a relationship uh, and through a class that I was a part of at my church to where we started the conversation and, uh, and then was able to make that hire. And, uh, and how that hire looked was, was I provided him every information that he needed. So he was not hired to come on and create systems and, 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 and build my business for me. He, he was, I don't need you to, to write this out. I don't need you to do any of these things. All I need is for you to be an implementer and then outside of that, he is providing a, a number of other things that are a ton of value. So he gets handed an onboarding packet that has every single day-to-day -day task that he has, the details of why he's doing those, scriptures tied to them, and the vision that is tied to the task. So as an example, when I bring on new hires, HR handles, I have a list of 15 items. HR handles one through 10, and then Donovan, uh, my operations guy handles 11 through 15. And so he knows that when he gets handed a new hire, um, that he is only responsible for 11 through 15, and then he is implementing that. He also is handed how to do meetings, how to how we, how we I look for uh, my top 20% of my guys so I can start pouring into my top 20%. He handles all of the inventory, which he was handled handed a, a Google Sheet doc that was a live doc to where he can keep track of all of the inventory. Not only that, but he was handed a system for the inventory that I have five different departments within my factory that where all of my inventory is stored. And what we've done is I put a clipboard out there with one of my factory workers name on top of that clipboard and they are responsible for that department. So whenever somebody goes in and checks something out, the head of that department lets them know, hey, you are to write on this clipboard here what is being taken out. So when inventory is taken out of my equipment section of my inventory, then Jim will go on, he'll write it, write it on the board, what was taken out. 
then Donovan will come through with his Google Sheet with his live doc and, and, and keep a live documentation of what was being taken out. That way I constantly have a record of what inventory we have and what inventory is needed. So uh, that is a kind of a filler uh, a system until I get a barcode and, and, and scanning in and out system implemented. Now, um, a big part of this is, and I, wanted, I want everybody to hear this, if you are the visionary, if you sit at the top of your business, if you're the CEO of your business, you have to, you really need to start praying that God send you somebody to be your implementer. And what I would encourage, man, if you are in a family business and if you work really closely with your wife, listen to your wife, man, because like my wife, man, I, I have, I probably have a new idea, probably three to six new ideas every single day for the business. And if I go in and I start implementing all six of these or all three of these or one of them, it's going to dramatically change my business. And, and so I need somebody that is right there that is hearing the vision that can tell me, hey, it's, it's not time for that just yet. We need to hold off on that. I, you can probably implement maybe like one a quarter. And then that way I have everything written down and how I get those created juices out is I talk about them with you guys. Because if I don't get those created juices out, I'd like start to just go crazy because I want to see all this stuff implemented and want to see the vision come to life. So it's critical that you as the visionary have somebody that you can bounce the ideas off that can check you on those ideas. And then whenever you hear some good wisdom from that person that you have to trust, I encourage it to be your wife. But if it's not your wife, have somebody that's a hardcore believer and that you know that you can trust with the knowledge that you have given them. Write it down and sit on it because there has been times whenever I have sat on it for a couple of weeks and then I look at it and I'm like, eh, I'm glad I didn't do that because that would have transformed my whole business and I don't know if we'd be here anymore. So I encourage you, listen to your wife and, uh, and then listen to whoever that implementer is within your business and, uh, and make sure that you can trust them. Next thing is factory hires. So we wanna make sure that when I'm hiring people, I have a whole process of how I hire and how I do things. So really quickly, that is a, Two day or it's a it's I, I bring them back for two interviews, assuming that they pass the first interview, if you will. And uh, I call them the first time I have them in the next day um, or, or the next couple of days. They come and I sit down with them and I learn more about them. And then I take them back in my shop. I tour them around and then I find out more about them and who they are. I promise you, it's been it's been awesome to watch God move in that because there's been a number of interviews that we have ended up both of us in tears because I've gotten down to the root of the man and who they are. And really what they're going for and then that once once that is done i pray on it and after the lord gives me some insight on that i bring them back for a hands-on training and see what they can do and uh, pray on it again and then i hire somebody so i just got done hiring six new people to fill those roles i followed that that formula exactly and uh and man we have a special special team not just because of that system but most importantly it's because we have partnered with God. God is the owner, the CEO of this business, and then he advises me on who to hire and who not to hire. That doesn't equate to every hire is last for 10 years or, or even last for six months. Some hires may only last for a couple of months. Uh, but I have been very fortunate not to have a high turnover rate because we build a special culture here that is unparalleled and we really pour in disciple and love on our people. So when we're doing that, I want to encourage everybody to pray that God will send you. If you are that Moses within your business, within your family, within your sphere of influence, pray for the Joshua. Pray that God will send you the implementer and, and, uh, and, and that, can, that can take things whenever you're not there and, and do things just as good as you would do things if you're not there and then adding their own little spin on things. The next thing is understand that delegation is critical. I have heard many business owners, and I'm talking business owners that are doing close to a billion or well over a billion dollars, talk about if they didn't learn the art of delegation. And, and specifically, I heard a guy that was doing $300 million. He said, if I did not learn the art of delegation, I would only myself be able to do maybe $3 million. And I am nowhere near $300 million, not even close to it yet. We are headed in that direction. But, uh, but I can vouch for that as well. If it was solely up to me, we would not be even close to where we were at today. So it's critical that you have a great team and uh, you have people around you that love you and support you, that will speak truth to you, and, uh, and that will be a huge part of the team. So hopefully this encourages you guys today. Really be focused on how you are training your new hires. Analyze your business. See what new roles need to be filled and pray on it and partner with God and allow God to, to, to advise you on that. And then when you're hiring somebody for this leadership role, Think creatively and, uh, and, and think about how you can create a, a really creative uh, pay structure that would maybe not incentivize them, but maybe would incentivize them to 
perform at a higher level or, or give them a, a vision and a hope for the future to know that, hey, they've got a huge part of this and where they were hired is not where they're going to spend uh, forever at in the company. They're, they're going to keep climbing up that ladder. So, uh, so hope this encourages you guys. Don't forget, share the gospel with your people. Love on your people. Pour Jesus Christ into them and uh, partner with God and watch how God will transform everything within your business.